Starting things off, we were lucky enough to have some of the talent from award-winning film Stud Life drop by as they gear up for the DVD release of the movie. Winning the Independent Spirit Award at this year's Screen Nations, writer-director Campbell X offers up an insight into the 21st century gay experience, touching on the dynamics of friendship and love. And dropping by our studio, Campbell and lead actress Tania Miller introduce us to the movie. Campbell, Tania, fantastic to have you here in the studio. Thank now, you. Stud Life, tell us a little bit about this movie because it's causing real controversy out there. Yes, it's a, it's a gay urban film and it's the story between a friendship between um, JJ, who's played by Tania, with a gay man, who's played by Kyle Treslov, who's Seb, and um, she falls in love, JJ falls in love with a woman and Seb is jealous of the friendship. So the tagline is, who did you wake up with, your best friend or your lover? And it's a, it's a multicultural, comedy, urban, queer, amazing. Deliberate. That's the last time you crash at my house, you know, black. Where did the inspiration for this story come about in there? Like even the characters, is it relating to people that you know that exist in your life? Some of it relates to people that I know in my life and, you know, that I, I knew in my life. But, you know, a lot of it is online. And um, when I was doing the research for Stud Life, I looked at YouTube a lot. And there are a lot of studs on YouTube and I thought it's interesting that we're creating archives of our lives online using social media because we're denied access to mainstream media and I think it's interesting that we find other ways to tell our stories and that was one way so incorporated in the film JJ has a, a YouTube channel as well that she you know spouts to the world so I incorporated that into the film too. That's Seb, my brethren. Why am I so tight with a gay man? Well, if I was tight with a femme, it might get kind of complicated. All right, so some of you are thinking right now, that's just ridiculous. I should be able to control myself, isn't it? Yeah, if you feel safe, send your girl to me, innit? Then we can do a little scientific experiment. <laughs> now you've won a Screen Nation Award yes, already, yeah. which is a big deal. But uh, even more awesome. the general public, what's been the reaction to the movie? Um, I seem to be really warmly received actually, um, especially kind of abroad um, as well as you know in the UK. So this is coming out now here in the UK. Um, we did the uh, BFI last year and it was completely sold out. Um, and it's oversubscribed. It was completely oversubscribed. Yeah, um, and you know, the word on the street is when, when can we see it? When can we see it? When can we see it? So fortunately, people from the UK can see it. Look, cheers for giving us a hand, yeah. Now I know that you were really keen to tell like this unique story. That's it. It's like a unique perspective of an experience. But did you think about catering for a more general audience? Because I've got to say, there's some things there that I was comfortable with, but I think the general public may be a bit shocked at this bit. You know, I was like, whoa, okay. I think my parents saw it, and my parents are elderly people, and. Um, you know, I was really freaking out when they said they were going to see it. It showed in Trinidad and Tobago at the film festival. And I thought, oh my God, you know, what are they going to think about seeing the sex toys, seeing, seeing the um, BDSM scenes? And um, they loved it. And what they said, you know, what my mother said in particular, is this is a story about humanity, about humanness and love. And I just thought, oh, my, my own mother, who's a black Caribbean woman, you know, managed to see beyond you know, these issues or beyond identity to relate to the, the humanity of, of the people in the film. You know you are called African. African? Mm -hmm. I don't know where you come from, but you can't come in here and go on like you did done. Otherwise, I mean you go off to deal with, you understand? And watch me. I do a rum. Take a little rass oh, over oh, here. Oh, a little bit about homophobia in black society. You know, it's a massive subject area and 
something that people don't talk about、mm. as well. Did you want to address it in the movie, or was it kind of no? We're not even going to make reference to it. We're just going to show this and let people react to it. My experience in life and since、um, making Stud Life has been that, in fact, it's the black press. Um, we've won an award, which was a black award. You know, the people who helped us to do the film, a lot of them were people of colour. They weren't just people of African descent. They were Turkish. They were Muslim. They were different sets of people.、Mm. Have been very supportive, and I was very upfront to say this is a gay film. So I think you have to be very careful that there are different types of black people, as there are different types of white people. So they're the white thuggish people who are homophobic,、um, and there are the the black, educated, compassionate people who are not. You know, so I think we have to be very careful when we make generalisation. So the future for Stud Life, what comes next? I know you've got a big release coming here in the UK,、yeah. and then what do you hope follows that? I think it'd be great if、um, we had, you know, a good impact because it's. There are not that many films that are made that have、um, LGBT protagonists in Britain. Period. Or we don't have to see straight white men all the time to think that's universal and everybody else is specific. You know, they are specific as well. We've just been brainwashed to think they represent humanity. We also represent humanity too. You fems are always moaning about us butchies and straight women, but then you play so hard to get. This is easy enough for you. That's my work, sure. It'll wash off.